Kareem and Worthy to the left. Worthy comes to the right. To the left goes Magic. He's Curry splits the defense behind the back. When you're younger, it's not maybe I can be that. It's I'm going to be that. And that's the beautiful thing about growing up. And for me, it always was, I'm going to be a professional basketball player. I'd be in the driveway shooting baskets for hours where I'd count down three, two, one, and I'd hit the game winning shot. My father got into the NBA at a very young age. He was 27 when he took over as president of the Utah Jazz. We moved back east. My father took the job with the New York Knicks where he spent 12 years. And when I was 16 years old, I got invited to five-star basketball camp. It was a reality check to me when I started playing against NBA guys that I knew I was not going to be an NBA player. And driving home from Nick games, listening to Mike and the Mad Dog, WFAN, and then later on just listening to them every day when they were moved to afternoon drive, I remember thinking, I could do that. And that's really where the sports talk radio bug hit me. Good afternoon, everybody. How are you today? The Mike and the Mad Dog radio program. And because I had the knowledge that I had about the league, because I'd been a part of this league as a child, it was just kind of a natural fit to me. I got an opportunity to host a weekend sports show when I was 25 years old. And I'll never forget the first time I put on my jacks and I cracked the mic and I just went. And it felt perfect. I have this conversation with people all the time. What is the best time of year to be a sports fan? A lot of people would say the fall, Part of me believes it's the spring, but right now... And it was such a natural fit that before long I was hosting the afternoon drive time show on the ESPN affiliate out here in Salt Lake City covering all things NBA. I was then hired by the Utah Jazz to host the team's afternoon drive time talk show and also host their pre-half and post-game coverage for every single game. Our show really blew up. We were the highest rated show in the market. I loved the guys I was working with. We were flying high. And then on February 25th, everything changed. I was arrested for DUI and booked into Salt Lake County Jail. It was a really, really dark time. The arrest was hard enough because you have your own cycle of guilt and shame but you add on the public scrutiny to what you're already doing to yourself and it made it just paralyzing. My mugshot was everywhere. I was horrified for my son and embarrassed for my family. It makes you question whether or not you really want to continue on with life. If I can remember calling my parents and, and asking them to make sure that my son Connor was okay if anything happened to me. It was really the darkest spot of my life. I resigned from the jazz, spent 50 days in inpatient rehabilitation for drug and alcohol abuse, and served jail time to pay off my debt. I would read the poem Invictus by William Ernst Henley over and over and over, and that line where he says, my head is bloodied but unbowed, would just stick with me, because I was beat up, man, but I wasn't knocked out. It really took everything that I had to continue the process of healing and find answers. I read a lot, I meditated a lot, I traveled a ton, I spent a lot of time by myself. I was able to dig deep and find a lot of answers that I had never found before. It's been six months since I resigned from the jazz. I discovered self-love and truly reconnected with the people in my life who have always been there for me. With a fresh perspective in mind and seeing the world through a different lens, I couldn't be more excited now as it's time for the next chapter of my life. All right, what's up? Let's do this reality check time. I'm your host, Spence Check. We are launching a brand new podcast and I could not be more excited. This has been months in the making. When I was introduced to Vic, I knew that I had found somebody who could help me expand my reach, help me expand my voice and build something special together. We truly have to find a way to change the way we talk about mental health, addiction, disease, illness, things that are real in life that you and I deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. You don't think these coaches and players deal with it. Here's the thing, they absolutely do. And through the process of this journey, when you hear these players and coaches telling you how they did it, my hope is that you can find hope inside of you to do it yourself. We'll have the biggest and best guests in the world of professional sports. I'll ask them the same questions I've asked of myself throughout this journey and this path of self-discovery and self-love. I wanna know what they're about, what their stories are. 
I was taught early on in the NBA, if you don't let the praise define you, you won't let the criticism diminish you. That's well put. Right? So but don't buy into it either way. If, if they praise you, they don't know. If they critique you, they don't know. I'm a big believer that everything happens for a reason. And when I think back on my life now, everything that I have been through has been a conduit and a precursor to this. Things haven't gone as planned, but I still have a voice. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul.